Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the NPTEL MOOC course on Phonetics and Phonology, a broad overview. So, I am continuing with unit 4 that is speech perception and um, in the last class we talked quite a bit about perceiving speech and the segmentation problem that the segmentation is the perception of silence between words and how we use cues. how uh, human beings use cues as aspects of the signal that contain minimal recoverable acoustic information necessary for the listener to recover a contrast. And also this categorical perception. So, people that we hear speech categories rather than the small acoustic variations, category boundaries therefore reflect general auditory sensitivities. And also we looked at voice onset time which is one of the most important things that you would study when you study categorical perception. So, here we are showing uh, VOT release of closure of the consonant and when voicing starts. So, depending on uh, when the uh, voicing will start you will hear a consonant as voiced or voiceless and you uh, so, in the last class that if it is uh, there could be uh, uh, between the 20 and 25 milliseconds in this um, experiment there could be a category change and that is um, and the experimental results show that almost 100 percent of the subjects uh, gave um, a positive response within that category boundary and they would never hear an in between category and they would hear only uh, one category or the other category and nothing in between. So, this is what we saw in the last class. So, uh, we saw identification and also saw discrimination. So, in uh, identification as we said in the last class. Uh, this is forced identification. So, participants are asked to identify um, uh, based on orthography whether something is ba or pa, but in discrimination functions uh, it is not based on orthography. So, uh, speakers hear a sound and would have to identify something as that sound or another sound. And also uh, these uh, both these experiments merge in the findings of a category boundary. So, it is either ba on one side and pa on the other side, but speakers never hear an in between category. And apart from voice onset time and categorical perception, we also um, saw co articulation, how uh, form and transitions can change based on the following vowels. And these are three consonants, and we saw that irrespective of whether it is the same consonant or not, uh, depending on the following vowel, transitions could be different. So, a ba has different uh, transition uh, from a b, and similarly, uh, so across consonants also, b is different from gi, and gi is different from. Uh, D. So, both across vowels and across consonants there are differences in form and transitions. So, we have a lot of variability in the signal and it seems people are sensitive to these variations. So, speech perception essentially is a it is a problem it can be called as a listener's problem. So, how do you extract the most important information from the speech signal from the acoustic signal? How 
what is the process which is responsible for extracting the, the most crucial information. And it involves recognition of words and because that extraction, extraction will lead to the differences between words, recognition of the words and also help in making the contrast between two sounds, b, p, d, g, d, p, d, d, th, etc. And a lot of the speech research, speech perception research has shown that speech perception cues are the ones which help people to make those uh, distinctions. So, production studies show consistent VOT differences between voiced and voiceless. And um, as we saw in the first few slides that between 20 to 25 milliseconds and that is also shown in production studies. So, how is it tested? Um, perceptual significance experiments uh, ma manipulate the acoustic property uh, synthetically or uh, edited and uh, see if perceptual response is affected. So, VOT suppose VOT in CV syllables and it can also be done by naturally editing produced sounds and uh, listeners are asked to classify the syllables as voiced or voiceless. So, uh, the Lisko and Abramson experiment first showed um, that uh, synthesized VOT continuum for consonant and R syllables and where in a um, stable um, formant for R, um, stable state formant uh, region for R was selected and formant transitions related to the consonants were added and uh, 37 VOT variants were um, given to participants to hear. So, there were 10 millisecond steps as well as 5 millisecond steps and speakers of Latin American Spanish and 12 speakers of American English and 8 speakers of Thai uh, participated. And uh, subjects classified stimuli using orthographic labels as we had discussed. The, the way forced identification um, experiments are conducted based on orthographic labels where participants are um, asked whether a sound is ba or a pa. So, categorical perception is important because um, it has been shown that typically non-speech stimuli are very acoustically along a single continuum and are perceived acoustic continuously resulting in discrimination functions that are monotonic with a physical scale. However, as Lieberman and colleagues had shown speech is special. A lot of research has ensued in perception uh, research and has shown a perception, a speech perception can also be continuous. Uh, however, this lecture does not cover the greater details of the perception research. So, uh, speech perception research um, and ability to perceive speech has been shown in the research to be uh, based on cues. As we had already said, cues that is the information which help us to extract the most important information so that we can discriminate contrast and so that we uh, the word recognition uh, process is, is uh, optimum. And speech perception experiments based on synthetic edited speech uh, have been used to establish the perceptual significance of a wide variety of acoustic correlates of linguistic contrast. So, recall our uh, lectures on formants which showed that oral cavity and the pharyngeal cavity so changes modulates the speech spectra which is generated from the glottal region. And we have seen all these uh, resonance chambers and uh, how the spectra is modulated by the uh, vocal tract. So, so, this is the source filter theory. This is how um, sound is produced and filtered in the vocal tract. And after we looked at these things, uh, we talked about how these sources serve as input for the vocal tract filter which modulates the input as different frequency components of the source are passed through the filter. So, for the production of 
uh, sounds, all these sources can be combined, the glottal source, the vocal tract filter and um, the frequency components. So, and after the combination of all the sources, we have the peculiar properties of nasals, liquids, glides and also stops and fricatives. So, nasals, liquids and glides uh, have periodic glottal source with vowels, but their filtering effects are more complicated, vocal tract filtering effects for vowels are modeled as resonances of coupled tubes, each of which was open at the end, but it is modeled slightly differently for these um, consonants, it is modeled as uh, closed at one end and so that is it is a closed tube. During the production of nasal consonants, the velum is lowered and the pathway from the pharynx to the nasal passage is open and air flows from the lungs um, through the nostrils. In nasal stops, the mouth cavity is closed off by a complete constriction in the vocal tract. And also recall that we talked about low F1 for nasals and around 250 to 200 hertz and weak curves and in vowels, the peaks are lower in amplitude the release burst is very transient, brief transient noise which has a flat, flat spectrum and also voiceless stops is more energy than that of voice stops in the burst spectrum. The source spectra for aspiration and frication are nearly the same, that is the noise. Now when it comes to perception, so all these things that we had studied as a result of the source filter theory of consonant production. Now, we have to be aware that all of this contributes to the perception of speech. So, when you talk about um, consonants, when you talk about manner of articulations, so the, with the way uh, stop uh, completely stops the airflow and um, other sounds like liquids, fricatives, glides and vowels have varying degree of occlusions and lowering the velum uh, causes nasal sounds, place of articulation which refers to the location of the occlusion in the vocal tract and voicing is presence absence of the vocal fold vibration. Now, this is the most basic information about articulatory phonetics that you already know from the previous lectures. And um, coupled with the major acoustic cues that is stop which has a low energy and the voice bar that you saw for voice stops and the burst that you saw for stops because of the release and the build up of pressure and the release and place of articulation signaled by the spectrum of burst and also the transition which is very important, the form and transitions which we talked about. So, uh, remember the period of silence that we talked about, there is a stop gap of 50 to 100 milliseconds and there is a silence which we also talked about when we talked about in the last uh, class, we talked about how that is compensated for that silence is not almost is, is not heard and those things are actually cues for the perception of different consonants. So, phonemes uh, phonetic features like frication and acoustic cues like voicing and sibilance etc. what we showed in acoustics and those things contribute a lot in the perception of the sounds. So, noise generated as air is forced through a narrow constriction for fricatives and that is filtered by the vocal tract and transitions to and from the vowels due to changes in the vocal tract and sibilants have intense noise energy and non sibilants have weak non energy. So, uh, weak noise. So, the noise aspect which is stressed in the acoustic part is also very important in perception. And uh, similarly for nasals, the, um, the spectrum is dominated by low frequency energy etcetera and also nasal pole and zero which we had talked about yesterday are also cues for nasals. And similarly for glides, a relatively slow uh, transition from 675 to 100 milliseconds and F1 of both the sound sounds starts very low. The important thing about 
um, glides is that there is this movement which is quite apparent in the acoustics and that is also a cue for its perception. Uh, when it comes to the proximans la and ra, their um, acoustic cues are quite uh, complex. So, they are both very fast moving form and transitions and they have a well defined form and structure and uh, however, um, one should remember the F 3 for L is especially lower, F 1 is also low and then there are some other cues like F 1 is short steady state and long transition, F 1 is long steady state for L and short transition. So, even though the sounds are pretty similar, these are the, the timing of the F 1 and the transition is different for la and ra. So, summarizing like yesterday, so these are the things which are important. So, the stop release burst, the fricative noise, nasal pull 0 and F 2 transitions for all of these is important for um, the place of articulation. For manner of articulation, the attenuation, the change, the energy which is a burst in energy for stops and the noise in fricatives and the low amplitude in nasals and that is uh, important and the abruptness in, in the stops and then the fricative noise, the, uh, the, the slow um, uh, hissing noise and in uh, nasals the amplitude difference which uh, makes a difference between the stop and a nasal is an important cue and also for glides difference between F 2 and F 3 which is not shown here is also important. So, uh, let us also talk about end this lecture on speech perception by discussing how speech is uh, multimodal which means it not only uses the articulatory medium, it also uses other mediums to uh, for efficient communication. This is uh, with regard to what is called the McGurg effect. So, this is something which was first shown by McGurg. Uh, this is a very uh, interesting experiment which shows the McGurg effect. Uh, there is a visual stimulus that shows a speaker saying ga ga, auditory stimulus says a speaker says ba ba and then the listener, uh, listeners hear da da even though neither of the visual stimulus nor the auditory stimulus says um, da. So, basically the listener hears something between ga and ba because there is a clash between the auditory stimulus and the visual stimulus. There is a sort of a trade off and you hear something in between. However, if the eyes are closed then the speaker hears what is said and then when the eyes are closed there is no clash with the visual medium. So, as shown in this uh, diagram, the speaker says ba ba and the lips says ga ga and what is played is ba ba, but the perception is da da. So, um, these are, th uh, we have used some of our information from the MIT courseware on linguistic phonetics and these are some of the uh, papers that we have used to prepare our slides. Thank you very much for your attention and um, we will continue with the course Phonetics and Phonology, a broad overview in the following lectures. Thank you.